Hi folks! In this Rambles with Robin and Ruby video, we continue our westward travel along the Alaska Highway from the Summit Lake Campground to the Muncho Lake area in the northern Rockies of northeastern British Columbia, Canada. I use this video to illustrate and explain a geological landform called an alluvial fan. Having a better understanding of the alluvial fan geology provides a context for a future video where we actually hike a spectacular alluvial fan in the Muncho Lake area adjacent to the Alaska Highway. I will also briefly illustrate how the geological characteristics of an alluvial fan influence where native plants grow or try to grow. Again, as background for the next video where I will look more closely at some plants that I saw on the alluvial fan in the Muncho Lake area. So let's get right into this cool mountain geological landform called an alluvial fan. Before we get going, we should address the question, what is an alluvial fan? To answer that question, we'll first look at a simple alluvial fan located along the Alaska Highway between Toad River Lodge and Muncho Lake. I will call this the Toad River alluvial fan. On this Google Earth image, the alluvial fan is labeled AF. The Toad River alluvial fan is cone-shaped and consists of sediments that fan outwards from a concentrated source of sediment. That concentrated source of sedimentary material is labeled with the letter S on this photo. That sediment source was a rushing river that flowed down a confined valley or canyon labeled C that cuts through two mountains. When flowing in the canyon, the river is powerful and it is capable of carrying sedimentary material ranging in size from boulders to sand-sized grains. This broken up sedimentary mountain rock carried by the river was created by the weathering of the adjacent mountains. When the rushing river emerged from the canyon, labeled C, onto a flat valley plain, labeled P, the river spread out, slowed down, and lost its ability to carry all that suspended sedimentary material. That is when and where the river started to deposit the transported sedimentary material onto the surface of the flat valley floor to form the alluvial fan, labeled AF. The alluvial fan was created by building up sheet upon sheet of boulders to sand-sized grains of sedimentary material. The fan apex, labeled A, formed when the rushing river started to slow down when it emerged from the canyon onto the flat plain. The river flow from the confined canyon onto the broad valley floor or flat plain could have been sudden as during an intense thunderstorm or seasonal as in the spring when mountain snow melts over a short period of time. As an aside, sudden mountain storms and spring melting snow both can create powerful rivers that flow down the confined mountain canyons. Also, alluvial fans come in various sizes, ranging from very small, say less than a meter square or 11 square feet, up to very extensive, reaching almost 20,000 square kilometers or 7,700 square miles in area. Now, when you look horizontally towards the toe of the Toad River alluvial fan, as in this photo, you see that the alluvial fan slopes gently up towards the apex. That is quite typical. So to summarize, an alluvial fan is an accumulation of sediments that fans out from a concentrated source, such as the point where a river, confined in a narrow canyon, flows out onto a flat plain or valley. In the most simple case, the alluvial fan is shaped like a cone turned on its side, with the apex pointed towards the source of sediments. Now, of relevance to plants, the sediments located close to the alluvial fan apex, or the sediment source, and along the active river channels developed on the alluvial fan, generally consist of boulders and gravel with very little silt. That's a tough place for plants to grow because plants have nothing to set their roots into and the periodic river floods wash the plants away. Conversely, Sediments that accumulate on the edges of the alluvial fan away from the apex or on the distant toe of the alluvial fan or in parts of the alluvial fan that are no longer active generally consist of more sand-sized material and are not subject to periodic torrential flooding. 
Those areas are better suited for plants and are generally the first to become vegetated. Of course, these are generalizations and there are many exceptions. Before I close this video, let's jump back to a Google Earth satellite image where a rushing river that is transporting alluvial fan sediment enters a lake, such as Muncho Lake, as seen in this image, a delta forms. A delta landform forms where a fast moving body of water, such as a river, flows into a standing and relatively still body of water, such as a lake or an ocean. When the fast flowing river enters the lake, the river loses a lot of its energy almost immediately and loses its ability to transport sediment. As a result, the sediment drops out of the river and is deposited as layers on the bottom of the lake. Those sediment layers build up to form a delta landform, much of which is generally submerged below the surface of the lake. For that reason, we would expect to see the alluvial fan transition into a delta at the edge of the lake, which is why delta-like landforms are common along the shore of Muncho Lake, as seen in this Google Earth image. So that wraps up this short video describing some of the geological features of an alluvial fan. Hopefully, when you drive over the alluvial fans along the Alaska Highway, adjacent to Muncho Lake, you will have a better appreciation for the alluvial fan landform and how it formed. All of this information lays a foundation for my next video, when we will actually hike over the Stones Sheep Trail alluvial fan adjacent to Muncho Lake. Now, if you learned something new or just enjoyed this video, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. Those simple actions let YouTube know there is value in this video. Until next time, thanks for watching and we'll see you later.